In this piano tutorial, I'd like to talk about Allegretto. Allegretto is a piece written by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and comes from his London sketchbook. And this is part of the grade four Trinity College piano syllabus. Now, Allegretto, the title is very important because if we have a look at the tempo, the tempo also says Allegretto, but with a 150 quaver beats per minute. So this is a very important thing to note because then if we have a look at our time signature, we will see that it is three quaver beats per bar. So when we then play according to the metronome, we can just put our metronome on 150 and then with each click we play a quaver note. So then this is quite fast but not as fast as we would think it would be so it will be normally around about the way that I've played it now uh, in the performance example. Allegretto also has a very important structure we need to take note of. Because this piece is quite challenging to play it will challenge you to think and um, uh, really use your memory when you practice. We need to have a look at the structure. We will see that Allegretto is in rondo form and we have three sections and with a rondo in this form we have section A followed by section B then with the return of section A then followed by section C and finally the return of section A again. Though some of the sections do have variations with notes, especially just before we go into the next section, but this is quite typical of a rondo. I advise that you use the structure in order to learn the piece, learning section A, then looking at section B, and so on. Don't just try to play from the beginning to the very end for notes. So break up in sections, do difficult parts first, uh, see how it differs from each section, etc. This will help tremendously. Let's have a look at the key signature. When we have a look at the key signature, we will see that this piece is, has a B flat as accidental. And this means that we will be playing in F major. But with this piece, typically of classical music, there is quite a lot of key changes, but it is important to notice them and note them because there will be a change of accidentals as well. Section A, we, so we will first start with section A and we're going to do the right hand, left hand, followed by hands together. So the right hand, we're going to start on F, not above middle C, but F, higher up and we need to use our third finger and here we can just use our third finger over and over again so we're going to start with repeating F's they're now semi quavers 5, 3, 2, 1, 4 over to C B flat A moving down our thumb to C middle C thumb underneath to F a little scale passage And then in bars 8, we have an acciacchiatura. And this is an acciacchiatura because it doesn't have a little line through the notes. When it has that little line through the notes, we call it a appoggiatura. An appoggiatura is played before the beat, but an acciacchiatura is played on the beat. So on the start of 1, with the C, we start with the A, followed swiftly by the G. So instead of then we have a repeat again of the same right hand three f f f f f same notes now we are going to exchange our third for fourth on b flat and now we have as fast two four three two one two one. And this is important. We can do one, two, three, but then it's a bigger movement for our hands to get to the start of section B. So by doing one on F, we can easily 
a stretch to get to our second finger on D. It's a much more natural movement. Remember, good fingering helps a natural movement uh, between notes and intervals on the keyboard. The left hand starts with F below middle C and we are going to have a big jump in octave. F, F, scale like passage, note, thumb on D, thumb on A again, then stretching to two, thumb on G. So that's quite a nice natural movement for our hands there. Then the second finger moves to B flat, thumb on A, hold for two counts because it is a crotchet, up to C, middle C, and then down to C below. And it repeats again. Thumb on D, thumb on A, second finger stretch again to F, keeping our hand in the same position, scale passage, third finger over, all the way down again, octave, now thumb on F, second on C, and F. And there we have our first perfect cadence to end off section A. Putting it hands together. Five, two, four goes over. Thumb stretches to middle C. Second finger on B flat. Both thumbs. A chakatura on the beat. Again, repeat. Thumb on D. Thumb on A. Second finger on F. Four goes over. Keep your hands in the same position. Four shifts to B flat. Third finger over. So we get our second finger on B flat. Second finger over. Ending on thumb and thumb. So that is our first part and we don't have any pedal signs in this piece. We could add pedal here and there to help, but it's best to try and get this as legato as possible without the help of pedal. That is why the fingering is written in such a way that we can help bring out a clearer sound and as well as the character to the piece. This is important. Well, this piece now ends with a fermata or a pause there on the double bar line between bars 16 and 17. And this means that we have to pause a little bit before we start with section B. If we have a look at the notes for section B, it's going to start on the second finger on D. And now we have an F sharp, thumb on G. So, and then of course remember the B flat as well. So there we have our first new accidental. Then we move with our fourth finger down to C. And we need to start immediately with our second finger on C again, high up. Thumb to F. And now the third finger goes to B flat with our second finger goes over. Now, this seems quite strange and unnatural, but it's actually good because now we can, when we jump from here to here, our hand can switch, flick over for the uh, octaves that we need to do. A, 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 G, 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 F, F, second finger on A. Now we have a triplet, pineapple, third finger over, F, and we've got a troll. And the troll is quite easy. It's, it's literally just two, three, two, one. And that is the end of section B. So for section B, remember the F sharp. The F sharp is very, very important. It's swift, it's only once, but it is very important. And as well as the triplets, in bars 29, as well as the trill in, in the same bar. For our left hand, we're going to have second finger on C, thumb to A, 
Now, fifth finger is going to go to D. F sharp. Second finger over to B flat. Keeping our second finger there, we're going to walk it down again. And now we're going to stretch a little bit uh, our pinky to C below middle C. And now we have a scale passage. Second finger goes over. This is very important because now we're going to put our thumb on F. And this is the following part is perhaps one of the most difficult sections in this piece. And we need to look closely, pay close attention and play this part first hand separately until we know it quite well. Three, two, one, three. One on B, natural. Two. So that we have our thumb on D. Third finger on C sharp. Third finger on F. Second, one, all the way down an octave. And we have five on D. And then they say third finger on G. You can use third finger on G, but it really doesn't matter in this regard because now the section A will repeat again. Putting your hands together, take it slowly. Remembering the B flat, fifth finger, four on C. Second finger over, second, thumb and thumb, C, third finger on B flat this time, second and second. Now jumping both, skipping one key, so an interval of a third, and the most difficult part. And remember the right hand is staccato. Second finger on A and third finger on F. Pineapple. On the beats. Now here is quite tricky. This can be quite confusing. As we can see, the right hand has a D and it's a crutchet. And the left hand has a D followed by a D as well. So what do we do in this situation? This is quite tricky. Here we are going to have to uh, have to implement the pedal. So what we're going to do is we're going to press down the pedal and we're going to hold it all the way down up until we move our first finger to A in the last quaver beat of that bar. Lift. So this is very important. Pedal, hold, lift. And now the second section starts again. Now, in this second section, once we started with the original melody, we are going to have a little bit of a change here. When we've done this one in the first part, we usually played B flat, doing a inverse or contrary motion but now we are going to do a similar motion starting with our fifth finger on C going to E and now we have the same thing achakyatura but the initial achakyatura was on middle C this one requires us to move one octave down so doing that part again Thumb. Moving down, lifting our hands and moving to low C. Now the repeat again. Now starting with C again here, but similar motion. Now the right hand moves to C.
as the start. So we can see here that this is a little bit of a variation on the first section or section A. We have to be mindful of those movements. First, in the first initial one, we had contrary motion. In this one, we have similar motion. So take note of it and move accordingly. Look at the differences. Remember the differences. Remember the, it's scale-like passages. So it makes it a little bit more easier to remember and follow as well. Look at the sequences to make sure that you do notice parts that looks tricky but actually is very easy if you just look a level more below the surface. In the third section we have a key change. Now all of a sudden we are going to be in F minor. Having four flats, B flat, E flat, A flat and D flat and because F minor, we are in the harmonic minor, meaning that the E flat will actually be E natural because of the raised seventh. If we raise the E flat by half a semitone, it becomes E again or E natural. This spot here sounds a little bit strange when we play it, but let's just do right and left hand and then put it together. So this is a moment of tension in the piece as well. D flat, all the way up to A flat. Going down from where the thumb was to second finger on B flat. A natural to G flat. So we have this descending sequence of notes. And then we have this chromatic section following. Two, one, two, three, one, two, A flat, three, two, one, three, two. Starting again, same thing, two, three, two, one, two on B flat. Now we're going to do this, four, five, three on D flat, two on B flat, one on G, all over with our second finger to E and then F. So quite a tricky section this, if we have a look at it that way. But remember, we have an, a, a descending sequence and we have a lot of chromatic movement. So we need to really, really take a close look at our flats, our key signatures flats, as well as what are, are natural in this section. The left hand starts with our fourth finger on F and our second finger starts on A flat. I don't like this fingering at all because now we have to move our fifth finger all of a sudden. It's best to start with three and five. So that we now just can do B natural and D. Then move down to E and G. And now we're going to, to, to reach for our E flat with our fifth finger. And we're going to have G flat followed by A natural. Now we have D with our third finger, four on D flat, five on C. Now we have four on B and then we have five on B flat. Big jump, quick notes. A flat, five on F, ending with our fourth finger on C. So I'm going to do this a little bit faster because it just repeats again right up until the last three bars of the section. So we have two, three, moving down, stretching, third finger on D, four, Repeating. Do not hold on to those notes. Third finger again. Five this time on C. We're not going to put our thumb underneath because now we're going to do this. C, middle C, B, natural. Now we're going to do C, A flat, B flat, C, all the way down, ending again with a perfect cadence. 
Putting these hands together, we are going to do the following. Down. Second finger on B flat, third finger on D. Four. Now five. Thumb. Repeat. Down. Second finger on B flat, third finger this time on D. Fifth finger on C. Now we're going to have And once you get through this very, very, very tricky part, putting your hands together, we are going to go DC or fine, the couple or fine. So we're going to go back to the beginning and we're going to play until fine. So basically the A section repeats, an easy part. So we start easy, it gets much more trickier, and then finally we end again with the easy A part. And so on until the very end. Now please, in my performance video, I use different fingers. Um, I sight read most of the time, so I cannot always look at what fingers to do. But please, when you learn this piece to be performance ready, to, to, to give, it, give it your all at an exam, make sure that you use the correct fingers and use the same fingers over and over again. Don't rely on the, the, the memory of which notes comes next. Have, have that extra security measure in place by learning the correct fingering. That's why you have to take this slow, be patient with yourself. It will take a while. But luckily the A part is easy with the B part a little bit more tricky, the C part perhaps the most trickiest part, and then repeating again with the A part. If we have a look at uh, dynamics, we start mezzo forte. Then we move on and we do mezzo piano in the second section. We have a little crescendo there as well. And then return of the first section is mezzo forte. Our third section, section C, is piano. And then finally we go back to mezzo forte. So actually just three dynamics that we need to take note of. Section A is mezzo forte, medium loud. Section B is mezzo piano, medium soft. Then section C is piano. And with the alternating between the sections, we will have a reduction in our dynamics. Mezzo forte, mezzo piano. Mezzo forte, piano. Followed by mezzo forte. If you found this video helpful, please remember to subscribe to my channel and check out any other videos that might benefit you. Thanks for watching.